Mr. Hyde. Are you driving? What a big kid. Hi everyone, this is Alistair's dad. The most important thing to remember is just because some of these signs exist in your child, that doesn't mean an automatic diagnosis for autism. However, the more these behaviors occur in your child, the more concerned you should be. The key here is consistency and frequency of these behaviors. So in this first example, it's pretty obvious. Some children will hand flap during early development, but as with all these signs, pay attention to how long the behaviors last. If the child grows out of these behaviors, generally around three years of age, there's not much to worry about. But with someone like Alistair, who hand flaps every day, there is cause for concern. This is one example of self-stimulation, or stimming, as it is called, and it helps to calm children with autism. This second example can be confusing to some, as most people have at least attempted to walk on their tippy toes at some point in their life. Again, pay attention to how often the child does the behavior. Our nine-year-old son, who was diagnosed with autism, still walks on his tippy toes to this very day. This third example may seem alarming. However, as long as they bang their head on something soft, like this padded high chair, generally they'll be okay. As a form of stimming, it can help calm the child due to the rocking motion. Many people with autism like to rock back and forth. We also show Alistair banging his head on the glass door and on the ground to show you different examples. However, after recording the footage, we promptly removed Alistair from the situation and redirected his attention to avoid any potential damage. Some people even need to buy football helmets for their kids, it gets so bad. This fourth example may not seem so odd to parents and others. After all, hasn't every kid been fussy in public at some point? But this behavior has less to do with not getting a treat or a toy, but due to the loud, bright conditions of most public settings. While it may be hard to distinguish sensory fussiness or meltdowns from common temper tantrums, an easy way to tell is this. When you give your child what they want, do they stop the bad behavior? If so, it's probably them just throwing a typical tantrum. However, if they continue to fuss, scream and cry, as if in pain, even after they get what they want, then it's probably a sensory related tantrum or meltdown, as most people call it. Although I don't recommend giving into a child's demands, I think this exception can help once in a while, as it can be very revealing. Also, most common tantrums last minutes, whereas a sensory meltdown can last hours. Oh, buddy. Buddy, I love you. Oh, hard time, hard time, I know. We'll get you home, okay? In this fifth example, we see another example of stimming. While every child loves to play with water and blow bubbles in their milk, the key here is again, how long does this behavior last? Also, you may notice that your child is doing this behavior alone, withdrawn from others, instead of trying to put on a show. Generally, the behavior will last longer than five or 10 minutes and can last hours depending on the severity of autism. Look for extreme obsession and repetition with objects. And number six, we have very aggressive behavior. All kids fight at some point. But is your child doing this immediately after being punished as if they are enjoying it? It may seem odd, but this can be another form of stimulation as they get a strong response from others when they are aggressive. You will notice the child being much more aggressive than a typical child for no obvious or good reason, like wanting something another child has, such as a toy. Alistair, can you use your words? What do you think about the car wash? At number seven, we have a lack of response to voice or sound. While every child has ignored their parents at some point, usually out of spite, you will notice an autistic child being aloof, as if in their own little world. Sometimes parents think their little child has hearing problems at first, but this has more to do with being withdrawn than not hearing. If anything, autistic people hear too much and have a hard time filtering out noises. Alistair. Alistair. What are you playing with there, bud? You playing with a car? Sit down. Alistair. 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 Alistair, I'm talking to you. Number eight is probably the most well known sign, and that's the lack of eye contact. Most people with autism will avoid eye contact whenever they can, and many describe it as painful. While the specific reasons can vary from person to person, this is definitely a strong sign that autism is present and usually persists into adulthood. Number nine is missing speech milestones. If you don't know the general rule for how many words your baby or toddler should be using, then it's only a quick internet search away. Generally, if your child is only using a few words at age three, there is cause for concern. If your child is four or five and is still not using basic sentences, there is a great cause for concern. 
Also, echoing words or echolalia is when they constantly repeat the same phrase, not in a learning way, but more like a broken record way, again and again and again. So be aware of that too. It's been saying the same thing for the past 20 minutes, right? Finally, not all people with autism are nonverbal. Just because your child may be talking doesn't mean they're necessarily out of the woods. Number 10 has to do with problems in food or textures. Many people with autism are picky eaters, which ties them with the sensory issues. Some hate the feeling of yogurt or dislike their food touching other food. While this sounds like typical child behavior, it's on a much higher level. If you offer that food to your child, even if they are clearly hungry, they won't eat it even to save their lives. Fortunately, our son Alistair passes this test mostly. He loves all kinds of foods. He is much more picky with textures like clothing tags and scratchy shirts. Our older boys who have been diagnosed with autism still love to wear their clothes inside out to avoid clothing tags or odd textures. Alistair loves the feel of flannel and likes to wear hats for the feeling of security it gives him. While we didn't get to cover all the signs and symptoms of autism, we hope this gets you started in the right direction. If you seriously think someone you love has autism, please reach out to a local psychologist, neurologist, social worker, or other professional. The sooner you get your child help, the greater chance they will have adapting to society and its many social customs. On that same token, please continue to help those with autism by educating yourself and others about the conditions they face every day. Thanks for your time and best wishes.